Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah thank you. Some real high tech shit. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, okay, so my name is Roman Lutigal. I'm working in a company called Red Relics. We are doing uh, web applications and like last uh, six months is we are slowly moving from JavaScript to ClojureScript. And everyone in our company from now forced to learn Clojure. <laughs> so, <Yay>! yeah. <laughs> My short talk will be about how you start learning Clojure script. Maybe because you heard that Clojure is good and maybe it's even better. I don't know, but let's see. So Clojure script for JavaScript developers. First thing you should do is to go and write code because it's just another pro programming language. Yeah, it's a little bit different and it will, may break your mind, but it's just programming language, so you should go to Closure Script Cons. If you Google for it, it's I think it's Closure Script Cons dot net or something like that. Dot it's dot like, com. Okay, dot com. And this is just uh, simple, very simple exercises where you can learn about uh, basic operations you can do in Closure Script and some like syntax and everything. So then you may want to go to uh, uh, okay. There should be links, <laughs> not the names <laughs> of the links. So this is basically uh, a map of what you can do in JS and JavaScript and how it will look like in Closure Script and what you can do in Closure Script and how it look like in JavaScript or maybe there is no implementation of this in. Uh, JavaScript, so you can see how to define a function, how to create lazy sequence or stuff like that. It helps you to figure out how things are in your project, for example, would look like in Clojure Script. Uh, Clojure Script, check shit, check shit, some check shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically a big, big table of uh, syntax uh, things like keywords some operations from standard library for Clojure script uh, with descriptions of everything with some examples so it's like 10 minutes and you already know everything because the standard library in Clojure script is very small Clojure docs it's not Clojure script it's Clojure but Clojure script is just Clojure for JavaScript so you can go there Google uh, search for a uh, function which you're interested in and you will see the big uh, large description with uh, some examples so basically i go there if i want to know about some how some, how some function from closure works so it's, it's a good it's like mdm for javascript developers so it's closure does and the big question is java when you javascript developer you don't want to get your hands into Java because we have NPM and we love JavaScript and we don't want to put Java and wait one it starts like one minute or something so yes we're afraid of Java but maybe Java is not a problem the problem is this <laughs> parentheses like lots of parentheses and it's a big problem for JavaScript developers because you we are used to curly braces and everything and it helps us to read out the block of code or something like that and what we have here is tons of this stuff so this problem is like partially solved by a tool called Parinfer uh, it's basically a plugin for uh, editors which handles for you indentation and uh, when you remove uh, for example when you remove a line from the code it will automatically remove uh, parentheses and add another one or something like that. So you just need to write code and you don't need to follow where you need to adjust something. So it's available for Atom Editor, for Sublime Text, for Vim, and I think even more. So, and when you just started, you probably don't want immediately go to 
to setting up a big project that we usually do in JavaScript. We are starting digging into web part or something on ground, go out. No, when we, do, when we learn uh, JavaScript, what we're starting with is going to the browser console or uh, firing up like JSBean or JSFeed or something like that. And we're trying some little snippets of code. But with Clojure, you need Java, you need to install it, you need run, you need wait. When you're on Clojure script, when you just started, you don't need Java. Because now Clojure script can, can compile itself and you can just put these five megabytes of JavaScript into the browser, write some Clojure script code, give it to the compiler. It's like Clojure script, the runtime of Clojure script with the compiler itself, compile it into JavaScript and you can use in the browser, write code, compile and evaluate it. So there is a closure script for JSB. You can go right now to JSB, select closure script processor, write some code, hit evaluate, and then it will do everything in the browser. So you don't need Java to get started in too long. There is also a closure script web repo. It's not, like, not uh, JSB where you can use, uh, write some snippets of code, but it's standard REPL in the browser. There is Closure Scripts REPL for ISX. It's also based, uh, it's also compiled to JavaScript. It's, it runs on uh, JavaScript core engine, I guess. So it's, you just run the application and the REPL is starting immediately. You don't need to wait. Uh, and in this, in uh, standalone REPL, you can load macros and everything. Uh, there is Closure Script REPL for iOS. It's called Replit, I think. You can install, and you can like, practice Closure Script while, while you are going home in the bus or something like that. It's very helpful. Uh, so, what's the best way to learn Closure Script? You are starting, you have all the tools to start with, to write some code, you know how to write parentheses and stuff like that. But then, which, which way to choose to learn? The best way I chose for myself is write an application. But first, write the application like in per closure script. For example, if you're starting with JavaScript, you will do, you will write an application in per JavaScript. Maybe, okay, maybe jQuery. <laughs> but uh, choose a simple application, maybe to-do list and write it in poor closure script. What I mean uh, poor closure script is you use just a standard library inside of the closure script and JavaScript functions. Like add event listener, set timeout, or something like that. Don't use any library. And this will help you to understand how bad is JavaScript in Clojure Script. It's not practical to use. So then take your application and rewrite it with Google Clojure Library. Google Clojure Library, it's a like, standalone library. It's well tested, it's very old, and it's by default. When I say it's old, it doesn't mean that it's old and like crappy. It's old because it's tested and uh, Google and Clojure Script uses it by default. So when you install Clojure Script, it's already there. You can require it and use. It's working everywhere in every browser because it's cross-browser, polyfills for everything, I think. Uh, then, when you're done, grab your application and rewrite it again, but rewrite it with some uh, SPA framework, for example, like OM or Region. It's uh, interfaces to the React or something like that. It's no matter, you can choose anything else. So this will help you to understand how to write properly uh, single page applications in Clojure Script. And then learn Core Async, because Core Async is like a basic building block to work with asynchrony in Clojure and in Clojure Script. It's a little bit different, it's like core routines, uh, and there is an implementation in JavaScript called GSCSP. It's based on uh, ES6 generators, but it's very easy to start with. Uh, CSP is, stands for uh, Communication Sequential Processes, I think. It's basically like you have a channel, you create a new channel, it's like a tube, and 
you can someone can put something into that tube on one side and someone on the other side can take it so it's, it's just channels and it's very easy to work with because you will need this all the time and we work with asynchronous stuff so closure script wiki it's uh, in the repository of closure script on github uh, you'll definitely need to go there because there are a lot of uh, links to articles how, how to know like Core Sync, some tools like build tools there is a build tool called lane and boot it's like task runners like gulp or uh, javascript or grunt you just describe your task for development like build without optimizations or last import then the task for production build and everything uh, there is also a useful tool you might want to use uh, for library loading like we have in javascript it's not library loading it's even better what we have in webpack it's hot reloading but uh, in closure script we have fig wheel fig wheel uh, uh, is it's hot reloading without chance that it will break because in webpack sometimes hot reloading breaks but because of closure and immutability and all of this everything works every time so you just write your code and you don't need to care about the preload or something like that you will never lose the state of the application another thing is dev cards i don't have a link here but i can add it later i just remember it dev cards it's like a tool to develop in dynamic uis where you can present a state of the part of your ui uh, and render it for example you have a button you can render a button in one card for example like usual state then you can render another card with a pressed button and with active button and so you have like big documentation and you can see live all the parts of your ui in every state and you can write tests and you can handle like state and there is a, like a cool thing called uh, time travel in dev cards so you can do everything with this library and you can read a book yeah because everyone should read a book <laughs> closure screen unrailed it's pretty new book it's still writing but like 90% of the of it is done and it's very good I read it and it's good so yeah you can go to dev UA closure someone will probably help you I don't know <laughs> they'll ask it there you can also go to closureans on slack uh, it's I think it's better community there are too much people there you all the time there are some conversations David Nolan there yeah you should go there okay so that's it thank you thank you Roman uh, who has questions uh, way too many hands I haven't seen who who raised hands first so we'll give him a call I think I have four questions <laughs> uh, can we can we do it like this? You ask one question, then okay. Ask yes. one. Yes. okay, okay. Please. First question is it's not an advertisement, but still, can you tell a couple of words about what kind of projects uh, you are doing? What is for? And what's the business domain of your project? Yeah, okay. As, as, I, as I said, we just started to just move into closure screen. So we have like one project in the company, and unfortunately, I'm not working on it because I'm learning. <laughs> Yes, um, but do you want me to tell you about the project? Yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. So my question is about performance. Uh, how uh, closure script is faster uh, than the copy script and uh, others? And no, it's, it's not faster. <laughs> it's like maybe uh, two times it's... slower. <laughs> yeah, there is uh, there is some tests. Uh, I don't know. What uh, you mean, uh, closure script, which is like 
what I showed, compile it on the client, or like a standalone project? Oh, a standalone, just JavaScript. Maybe it's a bit slower because of uh, the standard library of, Java, of Closure Script, like some functions, like we have, for example, in JavaScript, uh, we have filter, reduce, map, so you will use this stuff a lot in Closure Script, and usually these functions are a little bit slower than for loop or something like that. So yeah, it's, it's slower. I did, I did a, a like pet project, in uh, Closure Script, and it's uh, like WebGL playground where you can write WebGL, basically 3GS, in uh, Closure Script, and then evaluate it and run it, and it's like incredibly slow. <laughs> so don't use for like, high FPS games or something like that. Hey, uh, so many awesome tools around there about Closure Script. So, um, I know you enjoy the Closure Script a lot. So, my question is, no, no. when will you create the Bootstrap for this? What? Bootstrap. You mean bootstrap the... to run Closure Script with all the frameworks, with all set it up, with compilers in there. Why well, just... did they do that? When will you do that? <laughs> what? <laughs> when will you do this? Create a boilerplate project or something. Wait, you mean bootstrap like Twitter bootstrap? No, no, no your no. own like boilerplate. Yeah, like Helmon generator. Ah, you mean the boilerplate to yeah. to compile? Uh, yeah, so you script. put these all tools together in one repository and I just do the. Ah, you can just go to GitHub and search. There are like tons of skeletal projects. <laughs> Yeah, so we don't need another one. <laughs> I, I think it's done using line, so you just say like line your new project and then the name of the template yes. or something. Yes, exactly. Uh, next question. Uh, in case if you know, uh, what, what are uh, other stack of this project? Uh, what's databases, other additional tools? I don't know nothing about this project, so don't even ask me. <laughs> <laughs> Me first, yeah? Yeah, yeah. All right. She okay. said that this is a dumb question. I should should ask it, but still, uh, let's say I'm total noob and I'm starting and I'm started learning JavaScript probably two months ago. Should I should I get into this into Closure uh, Script? I know that this is just like a, I don't know. It's it will be really complicated for me. But should I do this or not? Uh, you can try. <laughs> uh, have you Why not? Anything else before? Oh um, no, I haven't. No, you haven't. Yeah. Uh, wait for four more months. For half month? a year. Uh, you need a <laughs> half a year before you can. All right. All right. Now it's fine. Question about sleep. What? About what? Third question. Oh. Okay. <laughs> What are uh, real good things about Closure Script, uh, real ugly things you find out during this study? Okay. Uh, for me personally, as far as I'm using it like half a year, it's the standard library of Closure Script. Because in JavaScript we have a very big problem, there is no standard library. And in Closure Script you have like tons of good stuff. And you write less and you do a lot more. So that's the biggest point for me. And what are the worst issues, issues, most painful issues? Most painful issues? Yeah. Parentheses. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> What's the most uh, coolest uh, feature of uh, Coral Street uh, that is points to you? For me, it's like com this compiled thing. Because you can like, write in another language and run it in the browser or everywhere. It's not applicable everywhere, but it's cool. <laughs> All right, I have one more question. So, what what is your main pros and contrast, for example, compared to to say, uh, decision architecture to use closure? Sorry, can you repeat? Okay, so for example, what is your main pros and contrasts? So, you are going to sell uh, an idea to use closure script. Is this, and this is an architectural decision. So, how could you explain this? I would say that. As I said before, you can write 
less and do more. But the main thing for me as a developer, because we are developers being told that we need to, to think about product, but actually we are thinking more about writing code, and we hate code. So as for me, as for developer, it's completely another way to think, and it's, di it's very different, and you can bring some ideas back, back to JavaScript. But for the product, as far as I know, on the project our team is working on, it's, uh, they're doing much faster, and they're doing it much better. Almost still my last question, <laughs> but still. Uh, uh, what must be the biggest motivation for someone to start using JavaScript? Let's say, uh, the biggest, why the big I have to use it, why I have, in what case I don't have to use it anyway. So, okay. what's your suggestion personally, and maybe of your senior colleagues, like why you actually use JavaScript, not other stuff, or something else? Why it's better? Maybe you made some preparation. Mm -hmm. What's your comfort about it? Uh, the biggest thing, the biggest motivation to use Closure Script right now is because everyone in the JavaScript community is mad of functional program, programming. <laughs> so if you are not into functional programming language, you're like, no, you are 100 years <laughs> in the past. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know the. Like, the best reason, because there is like a big, a big, a big bad thing is that there is no like, not that big amount of projects in Clojure, uh, like in JavaScript. But people in our team enjoy it. Because I said it's faster, it's like developing faster and better. Personally, use whatever you want. You use what you know. No, because no, no, you, I, say, I, say, I, I want to use special, I want you to make it worse. I will do in JavaScript because I know JavaScript better. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, have you ever seen the um, implementation of um, using the Clojure script in, with Flux or J6, in, with React and J6, um, can we use this in such way, or can we have some problems with, with this? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I haven't seen like classic Flux, because it's probably, you don't want to do this, because it's a lot of the stuff you, you can just omit in Clojure script. But yes, when you, for example, try OM or some different thing which works with React, you will probably end up with something like Flux with like global state. You will use probably CSP channels to communicate between state and components and everything, but you don't have store here. Um, yeah, but there is no there is no JSX. There is no this kind of. Um, Sugar, like not from the Apple JS6 is not from JavaScript to just compile, but in Clojure script there is some mini templating things you can write uh, markup using functions or vectors, which is arrays, something like that. It's maybe sounds terrible, but it's okay. <laughs> you will get used to it very fast because it looks different. Uh, please tell us a few words about uh, covering your closure code by unit tests. What libraries do you use and what is okay with you? No? <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, you stole my question. I actually was asking, who was going to ask, uh, does using closure, closure script means that I don't have to test my code? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, what's your answer? What's my your answer, answer is I haven't write a single line of test. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, all right, uh, I, have, I have a question. I have a question. Okay. Uh, there was one question also. Yeah, I, I saw that, but your question whatever. Sorry. Your question will be the, the last one. Are you okay with that? Yeah, cool. So, uh, you said that 
at your company you made a decision for all new developers to learn Clojure Script uh, mm -hmm. before uh, b before starting any actual projects. So no. How, no, we are continuing taking new projects in Java. But everybody is learning Clojure Script. So how do you organize this learning process inside your company? Can you tell a little bit about it? Um, yeah. We probably had like one or two internal workshops or talks like where we learned how to use build tools, how to write a simple application, how to write not application but websites of different parts. Yes, like one or two internal workshops. And after that, we seen that some people are actually very excited about it. So they're learning by themselves, but other people who like not so don't want to learn or something like that, nobody will force you because developers go mad if you force them. So it's a matter of time. Hi. Uh, Hi. I'm interested in uh, debugging. Uh, like, is it hard to debug? Uh, like, well, that produce in uh, developer tools in your browser or other other tools that you debug before, like before in I, in IE8? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, there is source maps, so you can debug it in DevTools. The thing is, it's even syntax highlighted in DevTools without any plugins, so it's by default you can read everything. But the thing is that it's a little bit, you, you, can, you can put breakpoint and it will stop and everything, but it's still a little bit hard because Lisp and like JavaScript, it's very different. You don't have this kind of uh, relation between lines and sometimes in one line you, you have like lots of things that may happen and you don't do this usually in JavaScript. So, yes, it's, it's possible and it's somewhat good, but it's not the ideal process right now. Uh, okay, we will not accept more, any more questions uh, and would rather keep this discussion after the lightning talks because we have some more to do. Uh, right now, after this, after this one, uh, the next lightning talk will be by uh, Alexei Rostov. Uh, he, he will prepare for the talk. Another round of applause. Yeah. yeah. And by the way, next week, is it next week or is it 19th, this week? 19th of the December. 19th, December 19th. Uh, just before the Christmas and before the New Year, you, you have a chance to go to Chernigan and attend a React Jazz workshop by Roman Lutico. Yeah, but don't register all of you because we <laughs> yeah, have too many people. Not too many. So they have like 20, 30 yeah, spots, something like, some, something like that. But you still go because it's free. Yeah, it's free. Right. right. So, uh, this was not done. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.